In this video, we're going to go over load balancer networking, specifically planning your workload network subnet. This is critical to a successful deployment of vSphere with Tanzu. We're going to start off with a subnet uh, slash 24 CIDR address, 256 addresses. This should give us enough addresses for workload networking and virtual IPs. You can certainly start with a smaller CIDR. However, you will need to be a little more careful in carving up that range of IP addresses. We're going to assign the load balancer an IP address of 10.174.72.127. Your networking staff should have given you the gateway IP address. In this case, it is 10.174.72.253. Remember that all networking should be routable when using workload networking and management networking. Now let's move on to the load balancer IP range. This is the range for supervisor and guest cluster nodes on the workload network. In this example, we're using 10.174.72.0 slash 25. That gives us a range from 10.174.72.1 to .126. These IP addresses will be used by TKG clusters and a number of other components within the workload network. Next up, we're going to create the virtual IP range. This is a range of IP addresses offered up by the load balancer that will be used to route to a TKG cluster or application. In this case, we're using 10.174.72.208 through .223. This corresponds with the 10.174.208 slash 28 CIDR range. Now let's view the whole subnet. We have our range of IP addresses used for the supervisor and guest cluster nodes on the workload network. We also have the load balancer IP.127, the IP range of the VIPs, the virtual IPs, and finally the gateway, all configured. Mapping out all of the addresses like this will be extremely helpful when you are configuring vSphere with Tanzu. Remember that you're putting a new network device on your network and it is doing routing. And so you have to be very precise in ensuring that you have a successful rollout. 